for more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello everyone, welcome to the launch of People's Health Dispatch. And in this very first interview of your hours, we are going to talk about a very important issue, something uh, that has become the major or had become the major bone of contention between the global north and the global south. And uh, somewhere there is a progress with regard to what global south has been pushing for in the context of COVID-19, uh, but we still have some way, a long way to go. So today we are joined by Sangeeta Shashikan, who is the development and IP coordinator for Third World Network. Uh, and we are going to discuss about TRIPS waiver at the uh, World Trade Organization. Uh, as we all know, uh, the trade related aspects of intellectual property, that is something which has, which governs global trade of many things, including pharmaceutical products. Um, uh, it was in October that India and South Africa had put a proposal at the World Trade Organization saying that all intellectual property, be it copyrights or trade secrets or uh, uh, patents that should be waived off for medicines, vaccines and other products which are required for COVID-19, its containment, treatment and management and prevention. Um, however, we see that it has been eight months to that proposal and it is only finally now that uh, uh, some of the developed countries have agreed to a text-based negotiation, uh, though from the very beginning, more than 100 countries from the developing world had been supporting this uh, uh, TRIPS waiver proposal. Uh, in the latest development, what we are seeing uh, that a new proposal, um, uh, which uh, is a text with, on which the negotiations can happen, that has been placed at the WTO uh, by 62 countries and the negotiations will start hopefully soon on that. Uh, we will, uh, we are discussing all of that today. So Sangeeta, that is, would be my first question to you. Uh, so we are seeing that the new proposal has tried to address some of the contentions uh, which existed earlier uh, uh, and that's where the developed countries were not really becoming a part of the uh, uh, proposal. Uh, what are those changes and how do you look at them? Yeah, so the, 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 the TRIPS waiver proposal is a revised uh, proposal that the proponents have made. They have uh, made the scope of the health products a bit more uh, specific. It has also proposed a duration uh, to the TRIPS waiver proposal. Uh, so what we are seeing is that uh, uh, countries like US, I mean, that became a big moment uh, in a sense when US, uh, Joe Biden's administration announced that they will be supporting the waiver, but just for the vaccines. Uh, do you think that is enough and uh, negotiations are possible in that context? So if you look at what is required to control the pandemic, it is really a range of different products and technologies. Uh, it's not limited to vaccines. Uh, you will need masks, you'll need uh, personal protective equipment, ventilators, diagnostics, uh, equipment for diagnostics, the, the test reagents, medicines, syringes, and so many more uh, equipment. And what we have witnessed in this uh, global pandemic since it's, it's begun is there have been severe shortages of these different uh, products. And these are very crucial products that are needed to restrain the uh, pandemic. So what is essential is really scaling up of manufacturing to meet this demand. And the production of these uh, products involves and requires various materials, components, as well as equipment. So the proposed scope of the waiver has to not only cover the products and technologies that are needed to control the pandemic, but also the different tools uh, needed for the manufacture of the products and technology. So if you look at, say, for instance, mRNA vaccines, there are uh, different webs of intellectual property claims uh, involving the underlying technology, such as the lipid nanoparticle, uh, which will be required for the development of mRNA vaccines. And the COVID-19 strategies of countries, the response strategies of countries, the US, the EU, and even the WHO recognizes that the intervention is not limited to vaccines. It's it, what is required is really beyond vaccination. Uh, for instance, the vaccines will not overnight eliminate the disease. Uh, therapeutics will be needed uh, for various uh, COVID patients. You also need diagnostics. You know, these are basically the eyes and ears of the global response uh, to assess the scale of what of the pandemic of the pandemic, but also to identify the variants. 
So in this context, you know, a scope limited to vaccines is not sufficient. Uh, and I think the revised scope of uh, the scope of the revised text is, is justified. Right. Uh, so uh, the countries who were and other uh, organizations who were opposing the waiver, they had one other critique, which was that the waiver uh, had to be temporary. So the new text takes care of it by saying, uh, giving us a time frame of at least three years. Uh, do you think that is enough uh, uh, to have like a, a three year time frame uh, for the waiver? So the waiver is granted under Article 9 of the World Trade Organization Agreement. And this is for the duration of situations of exceptional circumstance. So this COVID-19 pandemic would definitely meet the, the, the situation of exceptional circumstances. And the revised text uh, stresses that the uh, international community is actually dealing with uh, novel pathogens and there are many uncertainties. Uh, there are therapeutic investigation underway for different therapeutics. And then there are many unknowns with respect to vaccines that which will have an impact on the demand and supply of the vaccine, such as the duration of the immunity that is conferred, the effectiveness of the vaccines against new variants, um, the effect on children. So all of these factors have an impact on the um, demand as well as the supply of the vaccines. Uh, and the revised text also in its introduction highlights that the duration has to be practical for manufacturing to be feasible and viable. And it is on that basis, it calls for a practical and flexible duration uh, by proposing that the uh, general counsel of WTO uh, assesses the existence of exceptional circumstances, justifying the waiver after a minimum period of three years to determine the date of termination. So the proponents have provided a very clear um, and concrete justification for the proposed duration. I would even argue that actually the duration is quite conservative given the unpredictable situation that we are actually in with respect to COVID-19 because we are essentially dealing with uh, a new uh, pathogen uh, and there is very little information. There's very little that we know about this pathogen. Uh so uh, as we are talking about time, uh, so uh, now the finally when we are expecting text-based negotiations to start, it has taken eight months for us to reach here. Uh, and uh, how long would you think uh, the further the negotiations would take to have a final uh, resolution in hand? Because after that also there's a long process to go in terms of technology transfer and all of that. Uh, so what would you say, how long will that be? What should we expect in terms of time frame going forward from here? Yeah, I think the WTO uh, uh, delegation should actually prioritize the negotiation of this, uh, this new tax and they should really aim to finalize it uh, soon as possible. You know, this, these negotiations have to be expedited. We cannot wait many months for these negotiations to continue. Uh, because what we need is really urgent. The longer we take, um, there will be much delay in the supply of the tools needed to control this pandemic. Right, that's, that's so important. Um, there was one other argument against the initial proposal, which was that uh, the TRIPS waiver, if that is uh, put in place, it would endanger the incentive for research. The new text... Uh, has tried to address it by saying that we need uh, to preserve incentives for research and development and innovation, and that these should be balanced with the public health interest. So in fact, this new proposal responds to most of that criticism. Uh, would you agree with that, that it is trying to do that somewhere? Well, much of the COVID R&D is publicly funded. I think this is a fact. Uh, and companies uh, supplying COVID products are making enormous profit. So this is another fact. Uh, what we have seen in the case of vaccines and therapeutics, the research shows that the public sector has actually invested uh, almost 93 billion euros uh, for the R&D, uh, all these different investments for COVID-19 vaccines and therapeutics in uh, 2020. If you look at AstraZeneca uh, and Moderna vaccines, the R&D is almost 100% publicly funded. Uh, and 
based on the stated production of uh, company stated production of vaccines, the pharmaceutical industry is expected to make billions in revenue in 2021. For instance, Pfizer may make up to 43 billion, AstraZeneca uh, 16 billion, Moderna 32 billion. Even on a conservative side, uh, these companies are expected to make uh, billions of dollars. In the area of diagnostics, Cefit, for instance, has uh, by surpassed 2 billion in annual revenue in 2020. This is 100% growth over previous uh, years, largely through uh, the COVID gene expert test. Uh, now, meanwhile, COVID-19 incidented global crisis where countries are really moving from one national lockdown to another national lockdown. Massive social and economic impact uh, cost as lives, livelihoods all around the world are affected and more so in developing countries. So, uh, and especially in most vulnerable populations, uh, it is estimated that actually in 2021, we will have additional 150 million people being pushed into extreme. So given the, the current situation that we are in, the social and economic cost of it, it is really time for us to really lift the monopolies because these monopolies are actually artificially constraining global supply. So we need to lift these monopolies so that we can actually limit the damage of the current crisis. Uh, the lack of inaction, it may be to the, bring many, many more billions uh, to the few companies, but it comes at a huge cost to the rest of the world. And especially uh, the most vulnerable uh, populations, the developing countries, the least developed countries. That's right. And uh, actually, I think one place from where we can draw an example is the polio vaccine. Today, world is close to eradicating polio and poliomyelitis, and uh, that is, and the polio vaccine was never patented. So I think that example should be used uh, to say that why for COVID, uh, which has uh, wrecked havoc all across the world, and especially as you are saying, uh, in developing countries and vulnerable populations. Um, there, that gives us a very strong uh, reason to not uh, go for business as usual practices and the same arguments that have been given always. Um, so uh, lastly, one question, but I guess a very important question, uh, which is what role has the civil society and uh, health activists have played in your opinion? Because they have been quite uh, active throughout these eight months and uh, have been actually calling for uh, including your organization very actively across the world, uh, that there should not be any intellectual property. Um, and that work began much before COVID in one sense. So how would you see that uh, contribution? Yeah, civil society, health activists, trade unions, uh, many people have contributed and have shown a lot of support for the proposed favor because they realize the need to lift intellectual property monopolies. They realize the need to uh, ensure that there is no barriers to manufacturing and production and the need to scale up and diversify supply. Uh, and they have played a crucial role in also uh, creating awareness, uh, generating support for the waiver and mainstreaming the issue. Uh, and this is actually a key factor that led to the US expressing its support for, the, uh, for an IP waiver for vaccines and initiation of tax-based negotiations. Clearly, the waiver has to go beyond vaccines, but the US has at least, as a start, expressed support for an IP waiver for vaccines. And following the US support, other developed countries such as New Zealand have also expressed their support. So at this point, uh, civil society should especially focus on creating awareness among governments that continue to be opposed to the proposal, uh, such as the European Union, they have to highlight the relevance and importance of the proposal and that uh, countries that are um, opposing this proposal are actually hindering, uh, creating barriers to the world achieving equitable access. For we see today, and even from the, since the start of the beginning, there's been huge disparity in access between the higher income countries and uh, the developing countries and these developed countries. So we need uh, much more campaigning on the ground on these issues, creating awareness of the importance of the TRIPS waiver proposal, the importance of maintaining the scope 
and a practical and flexible duration uh, as proposed in the revised uh, text. Great. I think that's all for now. And uh, just to inform everyone who's watching this that the informal TRIPS Council meeting will happen tomorrow, that is Monday 31st May. Uh, and uh, we will know about the positions of the countries better. Uh, and then uh, there will be a significant progress on the text at the formal TRIPS Council meeting, which is to happen on 8th and 9th June. Uh, I'm sure Sangeeta will be following that. Uh, and uh, any last words, Sangeeta, before we close this interview? Uh, we hope that the meeting tomorrow on 31st May will actually lead to text-based negotiations. And we really call civil society to push their governments uh, in this direction and to uh, reach con early conclusion to this matter, you know, so that we can all move into action to do what is needful to actually scale up production and diversify supply. Okay. Great. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thanks for being with us for this, for our launch video for uh, People's Health Dispatch. And of course, we'll be coming back to you as these negotiations will get into more details and when we need to analyze uh, these important issues in uh, much more depth. So thank you so much and thank looking you. forward to meeting you again. Thanks. Thanks.